Yeah, um, 800,000 coronavirus deaths. Um, do you have a statement on your responsibility? Why haven't you uh, asked China to do more to be transparent on the Dave Rubin, this is the Rubin Report. It's February 28th, 2023. And that's right, everybody. It is the last day of February. Only 28 days in February, which means that today, sad to say, is the last day of Black History Month. So I hope that you all got your black history. I know that if you were to read any books about black history here in the state of Florida, you would be accosted and arrested by Ron DeSantis's thugs that drive around in nondescript cars. They're always taking people out. You know, if you're walking your dog, talking about, about black history, or if you're gay, how they know, we don't know, but they grab you, black bag on your head, you're never seen again. So we lost a lot of people, so I just wanna, first off, just my condolences to anyone who you know, lost somebody during Black History Month because of Ron DeSantis uh, or the gay thing. And uh, also, you know, for me, it was a wonderful, I think out of all the Black History Months, this was the big one for me, out of all of them. I mean, every time I turned on Hulu, black programming everywhere, and I only watched, if, if a white person literally showed up in anything that I was watching, I immediately shut it off and I would punch the dog. Didn't want anything to do with it. Uh, you know, if I put on PlayStation, tell me games by black people. Uh, I watch a lot of the Jeffersons. Um, I was out there doing my thing and I hope you did too. So it was a wonderful month for everybody. Very exciting time to be alive. And uh, if you don't know guys, we have a post game show where we do more of this sort of comedic genius uh, at rubenreport.locals.com. And I am really looking forward to the show today on this last day of Black History Month because I'm gonna make fun of people regardless of their skin color. Actually, some of them are black, but I'm not making fun of them because they're black. Some of them are white. I'm not making fun of them because they're white. Although in, uh, to some degree, it has a little something to do with their guiltness over their whiteness, but we'll get to that. Uh, but really today is just an absolute destruction of the people who give the machine everything it wants. This is a concept I've been saying over and over again. This type of media person who automatically swallows the line of the machine and tells you immediately how you should live. And then in almost every case, because time, uh, because truth is a time release pill, uh, we find out that they are wrong and they are mostly clownish and buffoonish in their actions. So we're gonna go through some late night hosts who got everything wrong, some MSNBC people, surprise, surprise, who got everything wrong. We've got Joy Reid, we've got Anna Navarro, and then we've got some good stuff going on. Uh, in case you did not know, and we'll get to more on this later, uh, today is book release day for Governor Ron DeSantis. Uh, his book, uh, The Courage to Be Free. The Courage to Be Free? Yes, The Courage to Be Free uh, is out today. And I interviewed him yesterday. We're gonna put it up, uh, I believe at 1.15 p.m. Eastern today. It's just kind of a mini interview because he's just on a massive, massive book tour at the moment. And yes, I did ask him that question. I did do it. Uh, and we're gonna play it as the cold close today. So trust me, you wanna stick around for the whole show. And with all that being said, one more time, happy Black History Month to everybody. And let me talk to you about shaving your balls and then we'll get to it. I've got some breaking news for you, people. Manscaped now sells beard products. That's right. They're once again revolutionizing men's grooming with the brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. From a beard trim to a fresh shave, the technology behind the Beard Hedger Pro Kit allows you to shape your signature beard look. I feel like the beard's looking tight today. Now you can finally use Manscaped products to make your drapes match your carpet by going to manscaped.com and using code Dave for 20% off and free shipping. It's time to tame your mane. No one likes a weird beard, so say goodbye to all your stubble trouble with Manscaped's Pro Beard Kit. My beard has never looked better once I started using Manscaped. The Pro Beard Kit starts with a beard hedger, which has a waterproof titanium coated tea blade followed with beard shampoo, conditioner, oil, and bomb. Holy cow, they've got everything. The Pro Beard Kit also comes with three free gifts, a beard brush, a comb, scissors to ensure your beard is ready to impress. Uh, so get 20% off and free shipping with code Ruben at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with code Ruben at manscaped. Is it code Ruben or code Dave? Am I lying? I'm lying to the people. 
Sorry, guys. I was so focused on this incredible name today. Uh, it's Code Dave. Well, there goes the 9-8 on the show. If, once I make a technical error, the 9-8 is gone. 9-5 is the best we can do today. We shall see. I have a good feeling about it, though. Okay, so the, the big news of the last couple of days is that the Department of Energy has officially stated that it looks like coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it at this point, the Wuhan flu, that little cold that you got a while back, that it was leaked from this lab in Wuhan. We also now know, and we did a whole bunch on it yesterday, that there was gain of function research being paid for by Fauci's NIH, despite the fact that under oath he said it was not happening, but it has now even been reported on CNN that it was happening. And gain of function means basically, this is layman's term stuff, that a virus has a certain type of function. And when you gain the function, you, you sort of make it jump so it can do other things, say infect humans. So a bat virus that shouldn't infect humans, they do gain of function research. Now it's gained the function to jump and infect humans. Remember the video we played yesterday of Bill Gates saying, oh, you know, there was this bat virus and then one step later, it suddenly was infecting humans. Yeah, gain of function, which Fauci was funding through NIH, through EcoHealth, at the Wuhan lab. Anyway, now pretty much everyone is, is basically admitting that it most likely was a Wuhan lab leak. Those of us that are crazy online creatures who don't believe everything that the mainstream media tells us, we've been saying that this is a possibility for a long time. I have no doubt, like literally no doubt. You can find videos of mine two years ago at least entertaining the idea. Why would I just swallow this, the idea that it wasn't, right? Like we know that there was some weird stuff going on there. The wet market story always, always sounded weird that it just came from a bat in a wet market in Wuhan, whatever. The point is, if you said that for the last two years, you were either banned or canceled or shadow banned or silenced or shamed uh, by mainstream media. They would call you a conspiracy theory and you're a fringe lunatic and all of those things. Well, anyway, Stephen Colbert, who is a quote unquote comedian who took over for Letterman, who is an actual comedian, who does the late show over there on CBS. Uh, he has been one of the most pro-vax. Uh, he has been one of the most pro-mask, one of the most pro-authoritarian draconian lockdown entertainers there is. Uh, but now even he is having to uh, admit that this thing likely came from Wuhan, from the lab. And here's him doing comedy, I guess. All right. Another surprising development this weekend. Uh, the Department of Energy released a new report saying a lab leak is the most likely origin of the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, there it is. Chinese wet markets, you're off the hook. <laughs> Wondering why the Department of Energy is the one making this judgment is because that agency oversees a network of U.S. national laboratories, some of which conduct advanced biological research. No, no. Bad energy department. No bio labs until you finish building your electric car charging stations. <laughs> Stay in your lane. They wouldn't release these findings unless they were absolutely confident. What's that? <laughs> they made their judgment with low confidence. <laughs> yeah. You could tell by the way they delivered the news. Um, maybe it was a lab leak. That's stupid. Forget I said anything. <laughs> now, it turns out... No matter what the Energy Department says, not everyone in the government agrees. You see, while the Department of Energy suspects it was a lab leak, four other agencies, along with a national intelligence panel, still judge that the pandemic was likely the result of a natural transmission, and the CIA remains undecided. Anyway, we'll have more on this story as soon as anyone has anything they can prove. You know, I really wish we had a sign in here. Can we get a sign? Daphne, on the uh, computer you can order things. Can we get a sign in here that will tell you guys when to laugh? Okay, because sometimes I'm looking at you guys and you aren't laughing at the good stuff. This idiot has a, has a sign. They have a huge sign. Have you guys ever been to a late night show? They have a giant sign that tells people when to laugh because otherwise you would not know when to laugh when listening to this guy. Now he's trying to back out of it at the end that maybe it isn't the, you know, the Department of Energy, low confidence, blah, blah, blah. But every single point of evidence is pointing to it. And the fact is even, even, if, even if it somehow turned out not to be true, and who God only knows if we'll ever get the, the truth, right? Like the real truthy truth of this thing, because 
who believes any of the things that these people tell us at this point. Um, but even if it turned out not to be true, the fact that he was mocking everybody along the way, while now we have a fairly important department, the Department of Energy, and most people consider that a top five department, uh, saying that it's, uh, it's legit, this seems like a problem. Now, I want to throw back. You, I'm sure you guys are going to remember this clip. This is summer of 21, okay? So this is over a year and a half ago when Jon Stewart went on Colbert and mentioned the Wuhan lab leak. Now, until this very moment, no one in mainstream media would even freaking touch this thing. Um, and Jon Stewart went up there and mentioned it. And watch how Colbert, watch how nervous he is while Stewart is just throwing out a, a theory. You're, you're allowed to have theories. I think this is still America. What, 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 what do you mean by that? Do you mean like well, so this perhaps was, there's, there's a chance that this was created in a lab, there's an investigation? A chance? Well, but I, so, I, 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 oh my if God. there's evidence, I'd love to hear it. There's I just don't a know. novel respiratory coronavirus overtaking Wuhan, China. What do we do? Oh, you know who we could ask? The Wuhan novel respiratory coronavirus lab. The disease <laughs> is the same name as the lab. That's just, that's just a little too weird, don't you think? And then they I, ask I, those scientists, they're like, how did this, so wait a minute, you work at the Wuhan Respiratory Coronavirus Lab. How did this happen? And they're like, mm, a pangolin kissed a turtle. <laughs> and you're like, no, I, you, you, the wait, name wait, of your lab, wait. if you look at the name, look at the name, can I, let me see your business card. Show me your business card. Oh, I work at the, Coronavirus lab in Wuhan. Oh, what about this? Listen to this. Wait a second. All right. John. Oh my God. Oh my God. There's been an outbreak of chocolatey goodness near Hershey, Pennsylvania. What do you think happened? Like, oh, I don't know. Maybe a steam shovel made it with a cocoa bean. Or it's the <laughs> chocolate factory. Maybe that's it. That could be. That could be. So the reason I'm showing you that, and you guys know I have my issues with Jon Stewart, like he's become ridiculously woke on the gender stuff and the race stuff. It's, it's a damn shame what's happened to Jon Stewart. And it sort of has led him into his like quasi irrelevance, right? He has this like, I think $10 million a year deal or something like that with Apple TV for a show that nobody watches. But putting that aside, what was interesting about that moment is that was the moment where you were suddenly allowed in mainstream to talk about it. So I'll give John credit for that. He brought the theory that now appears to be true to the mainstream a year and a half ago. And in the last year and a half, more and more people started talking about it. Now we're getting this uh, seeming admission by the Department of Energy that it likely was from the Wuhan lab. But what's interesting about that really is that Colbert is always giving the machine what it, what it wants. And what I mean by that, and I've said this many times, but what I mean by that is there is a series of people, mostly in the media, but politicians too, and, and probably institutional leaders and all sorts of things, who never know exactly what they're talking about or don't really know what they believe. So they always just say the current thing. And by saying the current thing, it keeps them in cahoots, it keeps them in good company with sort of the elite machine, right? And you're gonna keep your job, you're gonna, you're gonna get your cash, your, you know, your, your checks are gonna clear and all of those things. Uh, but they are the exact type of people that cause truth to be on a time release pill because they are just giving the machine what it wants and the machine doesn't want truth out there. So it kind of just delays all of the truth. That was one of the things that I described to Bill Maher uh, a couple months back when we were talking about Stephen Colbert. Isn't that crazy that you're right, that all the, all the comics that were supposed to put everybody to bed or whatever it is, they all went bananas left. I mean, Colbert, these guys are terrible. Like Kimmel to me is just fucking, you may be friends with him. I know a lot of people I that were- I know our I love Jimmy. Are, yeah, like he is Colbert and I are not me. friends. Yeah, like those guys to me, they're just the worst sort of partisan nonsense. You want everybody- But the good part of that is we don't hide it. Like, he no. doesn't like me and I don't like him. And we don't deny it and we don't like it. No, but he's nothing. You, Colbert? You, yeah, he's nothing. He's also Meaning, very successful. No, no, but he's just giving the machine what it wants all the time. You, giving you the for my differences with you, I totally respect you. Is you, well said. Yeah. Giving the machine what it wants. I yeah. wish I had thought of that phraseology. That's exactly right. So there's a certain set of people that do that thing, right? Bill Maher, for all, you know, I play Bill Maher clips all the time, right? And we've become friendly and I'm trying to, I'm trying to get him there. But he doesn't give the machine what he wants because he didn't, he pushes back against the woke. 
the guys like Colbert and Kimmel, they're giving it what it wants all the time. They end up being wrong about everything, but they never get fired and they make a ton of money and they mock half the country and they call everyone racists and anti-vaxxers and conspiracy theorists. While, especially in the case of Jimmy Kimmel, uh, you know, he has been in blackface many times and his ex-girlfriend, Sarah Silverman, has been in blackface many times. And these people really, it's, it's their way of, of bowing to the thing. Don't destroy me because I'm pretty horrible. Just I'll do what you want so that you can give me more money and I can get my liposuction and whatever else they do to these freaks. Anyway, as long as we're talking about Jimmy Kimmel and we're talking about misinformation and how they go out of their way to lie and then the truth becomes delayed, here's Jimmy Kimmel three years ago talking about how Trump kind of thought that there was some sort of Wuhan lab leak. How nuts. He's also pushing U.S. intelligence to find evidence for this theory that the virus was accidentally released from a lab in Wuhan. That's his new angle to feed the wing nuts, uh, to treat this virus like it was a conspiracy of some kind. It should have never happened. This plague should never have happened. It could have been stopped, but people chose not to stop it. <laughs> what people? Tomorrow he'll blame the Spanish flu on Antonio Banderas. Uh-huh. <laughs> We don't have a laugh track in here, so I, <laughs> I didn't know if I was supposed to laugh or not. Uh, anyway, of course, it turns out that Trump, when he was talking about, you know, closing the border from China and that this thing might have been leaked, sort of all the stuff that Jon Stewart said, strange bedfellows, Jon Stewart and Donald Trump, turns out that they were more right than Kimmel. Uh, here's Kimmel two years ago. This is at the height of COVID. And this might have, of all of the clips of mainstream media people being nasty, uh, really disgusting human beings with, I would say, no principles, but again, giving the machine what it wants because the machine wanted everybody vaxxed and obedient. I mean, this is just, this thing should be, I mean, I don't even know what to say about this thing. This, this thing should be his, on his epitaph. It's just that bad, watch. Dr. Fauci said that if hospitals get any more overcrowded, they're gonna have to make some very tough choices about who gets an ICU bed. I don't, that choice doesn't seem so tough to me. Vaccinated person having a heart attack? Yes, come right on in, we'll take care of you. Unvaccinated guy who gobbled horse goo? Rest in peace, Wheezy. You're Putting aside that it's not funny, like think how vile and now subsequently two years later, factually inaccurate. So what that guy wanted, if I, two years ago at 44 years old, having not been vaxxed, if I had a heart problem or I was having chest pain, he would not have wanted me to be able to get seen at a hospital. He would have wanted it to go to somebody else. Now, of course, the ultimate irony of that is that many, many people, especially young men, are having incredibly high rates of myocarditis, which is heart issues. I've mentioned it on the show a couple of times. I know a young guy, 22 years old, who is wearing a heart monitor right now because he got vaxxed and boosted, did not want to, but he had to do it for college. Everyone makes their own choices. Uh, and he was perfectly healthy beforehand and is now having heart issues. Uh, and this is just one of, uh, that's just one in my personal life, but I know that you probably know somebody too. And we're, we now know all of these stories. So think how vile these people are. So they give the machine what it wants, which, okay, that would be one thing if it was just because you want to cash your check, but you're also, you're discriminating against other people. You're othering people. You're, you're just doing the worst of the worst. But speaking of the worst of the worst, here's Joe Scarborough from three years ago uh, calling Tom Cotton a crazy conspiracy theorist for that uh, Wuhan lab leak. Didn't Tom go to Harvard? I think so. I think, so. I think Tom is a Harvard uh, uh, guy, uh, very well-educated. Tom Cotton, a couple of days ago, uh, spouting a conspiracy theory that the Chinese made yeah. this virus up. You have the lab and we'll there you go. in a lab. You have Rush Limbaugh every day, <clears throat> Presidential Medal, Freedom of Honor. It's hard to say this is the most reckless thing he's ever done, but saying that basically this was just a conspiracy and this was just made up to hurt Donald Trump. He said something yesterday. I, I can't even keep up with it, but every day is a new dangerous conspiracy theory I mean, this is this is serious stuff, folks. Don't worry about your ratings for one week. Don't don't try to don't try to spool up uh, some of whoever was wearing tin tinfoil hats in your audience. But that's what's happening. 
man, he is like especially bad. I don't know how, where they come up with these people. Why do they come up with, well, I guess I know why. Like, why does corporate media just get the worst of the worst? Like, I always say it, it's like, why? If they would just take bad people, just generally bad journalists, generally people who could just sit there and get the makeup on and just read the script, but just not be wholly horrible. But everything right there that Joe Scarborough is accusing Tom Cotton of is the stuff that he himself is guilty of. Of course it is. And, and for Joe Scarborough to, to tell anyone to not care about their ratings, I'm, I'm almost crying. It's so ridiculous. Uh, but here's another clown. This is MSNBC's Nicole Wallace three years ago. And what was she saying? Well, of course, Trump was a conspiracy theorist related to this lab leak too. It just never ends. Traditionally driven by science, not presidential politics. And the scientists aren't the only ones rankled today by Trump's effort at reputational repair. The New York Times also advances recent reporting on U.S. intelligence agencies, which we learned this week provided intel in the president's PDB as early as January about the lethal spread of COVID. Those same agencies now have been tapped with investigating one of Trump world's most favorite conspiracy theories. New York Times reports this, quote, senior Trump administration officials have pushed American spy agencies to hunt for evidence to support an unsubstantiated theory that a government lab in Wuhan, China was the origin of the coronavirus outbreak. That's according to current and former American officials. Man, it's wild, guys. Trust me, we had hundreds and hundreds of clips to sift through, we, to, to show you evidence of this. They were doing this endlessly, and now it turns out to be right. And also the way she says science, right? You've got to believe the science, but it turns out that Donald Trump, who you didn't think believed in science, was a little more right than you. Nicole Wallace, very bad person. All right, only one more on this, I promise. From the televised mental institution known as MSNBC, here is noted racist, uh, racist and uh, utterly ridiculous human being, Joy Reid, saying that the lab leak theory had been debunked three years ago. In a lab in Wuhan, China. And yet this week, Donald Trump is still pushing the debunked bunkum, despite his own intelligence community's findings that that is simply not true. On Thursday, the intelligence community released a rare statement saying they agree with the scientific consensus that the virus was not, not, not man-made. But it's not like Trump has a history of going against the words of his own intelligence community or anything. Guys, the intelligence community, you know, the same intelligence community that had 51 officials tell us that the Hunter Biden laptop was Russian disinformation. Those guys said that thing and we're supposed to believe them. Just terrible. And note, Nobody ever gets fired. Nobody ever apologizes. Great, remember Rachel Maddow with that crazy rant about you will not get COVID. It cannot affect you. Get that vaccine. You will be safe. You will not transmit it in the way she does it in that very emotional way that she speaks. And nobody pays the price for any of this. They lie and lie and lie. And that is why so many people are so broken by by politics and the media, because there is a truth out there that if you have, there is the truth out there. And if you have your head on roughly straight, you know not to buy all of their nonsense, but they delay it and delay it and delay it. And nobody wants to be canceled and, and called a conspiracy theorist and an anti-vaxxer and the rest of it. Um, so they just keep going and going and going. And that that is causing the disconnect. The disconnect, I would say, between probably your day-to-day -day life, which is hopefully somewhat functional and you're doing what you're supposed to do on this planet. And then when you watch these clowns who are protecting the people in power, who were locking people down and injecting them with crazy shit and the list goes on and on. Anyway, what else do they fear? It's not just that they fear the truth. They also fear that people might come into power who believe something different than them. And they hate those people. So yesterday, Joy Reid, and she's freaking out now because as I mentioned at the top of the show, Governor Ron DeSantis has a new book coming out today. And it's really all, it's called The Courage to be Free, but it's really about his Florida blueprint, right? And I always talk about the blueprint here. I actually started saying the phrase blueprint because a, a few months ago, I went to uh, his Florida blueprint education conference. But he's got a blueprint for America when it comes to education, when it comes to policing, when it comes to energy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm always talking about how that blueprint has to be 
has to be sent out to the rest of the country so they can look at the blueprints too, hopefully in whatever sane states are left out there and go, by golly, there's some stuff we can do here. By golly, there's some stuff we can do here to, to make it better, to actually have law and order and have a functioning economy and have people moving in instead of moving out and all of those things. I didn't even know he was gonna use the blueprint tag in the, in the book when I just started repeating that phrase. Anyway, Joy Reid's freaking out because uh, as I've been saying for a long time, what they're gonna tell you on DeSantis is that he is Trump, but worse, right? He is going to be Hitler with a calculator. He is gonna be all of the things Trump was, but he's gonna be functional and competent, unlike that buffoon Trump, so he's gonna be even worse. I've been telling you this for a year. Watch Joy Reid, make Dave Rubin look pretty good. The story about a cartoon creator becoming the voice of the great white male freakout doesn't end at Dilbert or even at Elon Musk. It ends, or rather begins, with white grievance politics potentially becoming U.S. federal policy. If Florida Governor Ron DeSantis becomes president of the United States, which he is clearly aiming for, America will become the land of total government control over women's bodies, black history, gender identity, how you can teach, learn, read, think, even talk. It would essentially be a more functionally authoritarian version of Trump, a more action, less personality type of president who's basically offering two options, pre-civil rights America or total control of society. Like, she should be fired. I, I don't know even know how else you could say it. Like, Florida is the freest place in the world, literally in the world. There is no one coming for anybody here. You can be gay here. You can be trans here. You can be black. You can be white. Nobody cares. We get 1,200 new people a day here. Actually, our one problem in Florida is that house prices are high because they simply cannot build fast enough. You know, in places like California, where people are fleeing, house prices are still high because BlackRock and Vanguard are buying up property left and right. That's a whole other problem, which by the way, DeSantis is fighting because he's doing anti-ESG stuff here. We have a legit problem because 1,200 people move here a day, they need housing, they need apartments, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's one of the questions I actually asked, you know, obviously I had DeSantis on yesterday. I'm not, you guys know, like, obviously I like the guy. So the interview is mostly like talking about the good things about Florida. But I said to him, I got to ask you one tough one. And what do we do about this? And he immediately had a great answer. They've had 20, you'll see more of it later. Uh, one fifteen Eastern, as, as I said, it'll be on Rumble and YouTube. And, and I think it'll be on Locals even before that. Um, but basically he said that they've had all these projects, you know, governments have projects in the pipeline. Those, they have a long look, go ahead, like a 30 year vision of what they want to do. And he's moving, I think, I think he said seven infrastructure, massive infrastructure building projects, uh, from 20 year timelines to seven year timelines. So things that will be done in 2030 that shouldn't have been done till the mid 2040s. I mean, this is, this is real stuff and it's happening right now on top of the fact that we're, you know, they've cut a lot of regulation. So things are being built. Anyway, everything she says there is a lie. Yes. He wants to go back to pre-civil rights America. And oh, it's just, it's nuts. But what is she really fearing? She's really fearing that people might start understanding what freedom is. People might start understanding what America really is all about. And it has nothing to do with the drivel that she spews every single day. And she's freaking out about this book because the book is the blueprint. And there is nothing more that a leftist fears than information that might free you. But of course, his robust PR team has you thinking quite the opposite, which is why his new book titled, and I'm not making this up, The Courage to be Free. <laughs> the Courage to be Free. As a first-hand account, from the blue-collar boy with a dream to take down Disney and librarians. It got scorched by the New York Times, obviously. Its reviewers saying, quote, all the culture war mad libs can't distract from the dull coldness at this book's core. <laughs> and that it will leave some supporters who have encouraged DeSantis to humanize himself sorely disappointed. The world DeSantis is building, the reviewer said, down in Florida is one that uses the power of government to make the Dilbert guys of the world feel comfortable. They feel good about themselves, centered, you know. Did you know that this isn't even Baby Maga's first book? He also penned Dreams from Our Founding Fathers, published in 2011. And it pretty much sums up what we already know about the guy. David Waldstreicher wrote about the book in The Atlantic, saying the most revealing and consequential element of the book is the insistence that the role of slavery and race more broadly does not seriously change anything about how we should understand the birth and development of our country. All right, first of all, I don't want to be demonetized today because it would hurt us in the algorithm. I don't really care about the money, but if I say what I really think about her, we're going to get demonetized. Then there's no guacamole for you for lunch. So I'm gonna write down three words that I think sum up uh, Joy Reid quite well. Okay. 
Okay. I wrote those with the words down. I'm going to fold this up. Okay. And I would like to, I will sign this here. I'm going to sign it as well. I'll put it the last day of Black History Month to 2823. We're going to send this to a, a locals member today. Someone in the chat who gives us a good comment. And they will know what I really think of Joy Reid. Um, yeah, freedom's good, lady. And you do need courage to be free. And uh, you guys should get out there and buy the book. I don't, I don't get any money for the book. I don't want any money. I don't get any money from the campaign. Uh, but the guy's doing the right thing. And when you're doing the right thing, you deserve... Uh, support. So just as simple as that. Uh, and when she mocks him for going after Disney and going after librarians, well, yes, we are taking books out of our elementary schools that teach kids to give hand jobs. It's true. Regardless of your feeling of the hand job, we shouldn't be teaching that to children. That's one thing that I think, well, in the old days, we used to all agree on. Even if you, you could be the most pro hand job person ever, but you shouldn't be teaching it to children. Right, like basic stuff here, okay? And as far as the Disney thing, yeah, he's destroying Disney. But what is he doing? He is not destroying Disney out of spite and taking away rights from them. He's taking away their special exemption status, their special governing status, which officially ends, well, it officially ended yesterday. So today is their first full day of work without their special governing status. What is Mickey Mouse gonna do? Here's DeSantis talking about just that. How do you give one theme park its own government and then treat all the other theme parks differently? And so we believe that um, that, that was not good policy. We believe being joined at the hip with this one California-based company was not something that was justifiable or sustainable. And so we said we we're going to do something about it. And so now we're basically... Disney's going to be treated like SeaWorld is treated or like any of these others. And that's really uh, the, the, the fair thing to do. So I'll be signing the bill momentarily, and that will officially end the self-governing status uh, here in Central Florida for Disney. So what's fascinating about this, and I know you guys know this, but Joy Reid does not like freedom. She actually doesn't like fairness, and she really doesn't like equality. She likes equity. What DeSantis is doing is just making things more fair and more equal and taking away special tax rights, taking away this self-governing policy and all of those things. So now Disney will be treated like SeaWorld. Should SeaWorld be allowed to basically have its own government as well after everything they've done to Shamu? Obviously not. Obviously not. So he's doing the free thing. But freedom is the word they hate the most, which is why every time they even say the word freedom, there's, there's this glimmer in their eye. They, they resent freedom. They resent your ability to think for yourself because once you think for yourself, you, well, first off, you don't need to watch a clown like that. Uh, but then you would realize that all of her policies are ridiculous. And point being, since when was the left pro-corporation, right? Wasn't the left the, the way we've always known the left to be? They hated evil corporations. Bernie Sanders, who does he hate more than people that produce things? Nothing. But no, but Bernie, he hates corporate. I hate corporations and the corporate. Bernie, I love my hair. He hates corporations. But for some reason, she loves corporations. She loves giant corporations that have special benefits because leftists actually don't believe in anything but power. That really is the truth. Uh, and here is DeSantis signing the bill. So uh, I'm going to put my John Hancock on this piece of legislation. That'll, that'll make it official. And so just look at your watch and you'll know at what time the corporate kingdom finally came to an end. All right. Today is the 27th. 27th, yeah. I have a book coming on the 28th. Of course I should know what day it is. All right. Well.
No, it's interesting. I mentioned the thing about how leftists were supposed to hate corporations, but Phoenix just said to me as that video was playing that Republicans in the 90s would have hated this, right? Like, so Republicans of the 90s would have hated the idea that the government is going after a corporation, <laughs> even if that corporation had special uh, authority, right? But that shows you things are changing. When corporations decide to go after our kids, the Republicans of 2023, at least here in the free state of Florida, have had enough and are gonna actually do something about it. It's quite beautiful. But at a cultural level, why did he do this? He did this because of, we've shown you many of those videos, all of the employees at the DEI, the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion departments at Disney talking about how they literally are putting uh, propaganda into the programming, how they are putting critical race theory into cartoons and all of the gender queer nonsense and everything else. They refuse to let kids be kids, right? And they want to indoctrinate these children. And they literally tell you that on videotape. They tell you that. And what happens when that happens? Well, then it starts leaking all over society. So this is a, a, a probably a lesser known story to some of you guys, but this is absolutely wild. Roald Dahl, and he was the, uh, the original, well, he's a, he's a writer, was a writer, uh, for, who wrote like, probably dozens of books, right? Dozens, if not hundreds of books, children's books mostly, uh, who wrote Willy Wonka most famously. Uh, eventually the estate sold his publishing rights. And now the company that bought the publishing rights are, is ch going in and changing to make things more politically correct uh, some of the original works of Dahl. It's rather extraordinary. So uh, Samantha Smith had this tweet up here. It says, Roald Dahl's publishers have made hundreds of changes to his books, claiming the language used was offensive. If you think this sounds like something straight out of 1984, it's because it is. Uh, and there's a couple a couple things here. Um, am I gonna be able to read that on there? I don't know that I can quite see that on there. Do I have that on my notes? Can you guys see it there? Oh, I do have it on my notes. Give me one second, guys. I'm, I'm folding up papers over here. Uh, so look at this. I'll just read the first one and then you can go back and read the other ones yourself. Uh, in the original The Witches, the line read, don't be foolish, my grandmother said. You can't go around pulling the hair of every lady you meet, even if she is wearing gloves. Just you try it and see what happens. That was in the 2001 edition of The Witches. Uh, in the 2022 edition, it's been changed. Don't be foolish, my grandmother said. Besides, there are plenty of other reasons why women might wear wigs and there are certainly, and there is certainly nothing wrong with that. I'll just give you one more in the middle. Uh, also from, oh, you know, I'll give you the bottom one from Matilda, which was a great movie, by the way. Great kids movie. She went, <laughs> she went on olden day sailing ships with Joseph Conrad. She went to Africa with Ernest Hemingway and to India with Ruyard Kipling. And here's the new one. She went to 19th century estates with Jane Austen. She went to Africa with Ernest Hemingway and California with John Steinbeck. The point is, whether you think that these changes are cataclysmic or not, this is how art changes. This is how we, pu we put our val uh, not our values, but the, the values of a really rotten society on works of the past that actually were pieces of art. And if all of this, if Matilda and the witches don't affect you, well, yes, I said he wrote Willy Wonka. This is wild. Remember Augustus Gloop? Remember the fat German child who fell in the river of chocolate, got stuck in that pipe, right? Very sad story, okay? I think he ended up in the mushroom, uh, not the mushroom room, the marshmallow room. Horrible, okay? Augustus Gloop, they are no longer gonna call him fat. Instead, he will be described as, give me it, what is it here? He's gonna be described as, enormous. He will not be fat, according to the Telegraph. Uh, oh, and the Oompa Loompas are no longer small men. They're small people, because we wouldn't want to offend a female Oompa Loompa, not that anyone knows what a female is. Uh, and to the point of all of this, as you guys know, that the wonderful, I would say prophetic, what was once a work of fiction, but unfortunately has become reality, George Orwell's 1984. I thought this quote was just perfect because this just, this is exactly what's happening in front of our eyes. This is, this is the most famous quote from 1984, of course. Every record has been destroyed or falsified. Every book rewritten. Every picture has been repainted. Every statue and street building has been renamed. Every date has been altered. And the process is continuing day by day and minute by minute. History has stopped. Nothing exists except an endless present in which the party is always right. I mean, my God, does it get more prophetic than that?
not really. But if you want the completely wrong take on uh, everything I just described, here's Ana Navarro from The View. What else happens is, um, I think overreaching and overcompensating and just overdoing it. Because to me, when you are removing all gender-specific words from the Oompa Loompas, I mean, people, the Oompa Loompas are fictional. Yeah. They're made believe. But, you know, when you're doing that kind of thing, it, then it lends itself for folks uh, on the right to say, oh, this is what wokeism is all about. You've got to be anti-woke. Let's pass an anti-woke act. Let me tell you what I'm concerned about. I'm not concerned about you editing out words from a book. I think that's stupid. I'm concerned about you editing out black history studies from AP courses in Florida. And I, you know, I think it should make us feel... Anna, oh, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to write down three words that I think about Anna Navarro. Going to fold it up. Going to sign it. 228.23. We will send this somebody after the show. Anna, okay, she almost got it right there. She almost got it right that the woke overreach with everything. So we shouldn't be concerned about, so they're, they're doing too much by caring about Oompa Loompa's gender and sexuality and the rest of it. Who would have thought in 2023 we'd be talking about Oompa Loompa's gender? The Oompa Loompa, who are incredible people, and, and the fact that so many of them escaped the snozwangers and, and that whole thing. We don't have to get into that right now. But the point, guys, is that then, of course, what does she do? It's not about the people who are changing the work and changing the meaning of words and confusing everybody and putting the, the standards of 2023 on works of the past. What is it really about? It's about what's happening here in Florida, of which she completely lies. We are not not teaching African-American history. It was one course that they wanted to teach critical race theory and gender queer theory in and push for reparations and a whole bunch more so that a high school student learning that would get college credit and DeSantis said is enough. She knows she's lying. Everyone at that table knows she's lying. The producer knows she's lying and everyone at ABC no, she's lying. Much like Andrea Mitchell lied about this, and we played that clip last week, and then she gave that half ass apology. So at some point, you just have to know that their job is to lie. Their job is to push misinformation. Their job, actually, is to do everything from that quote in 1984 that I just read to you. And what does this do? And now here's the silver lining, guys, and trust me, it's a good one. The silver lining is that when these people go more hysterical and they believe in censorship, and they believe in lies, uh, and they believe in all the authoritarian uh, policies that you can possibly imagine. What it does is it takes good people, decent people, maybe who aren't completely driven by politics, who believe in other things, who enjoy life, whatever that means to them, uh, and it creates very strange bedfellows in people. So I am very proud of the clip that I am about to show you here because when I was on Bill Maher's show about seven, eight months ago, I said to him, you gotta have Gutfeld on the show because I think you guys, first off, you're both late night comedians now. Gutfeld is now number one in late night. Gutfeld's a great dude. Obviously, Bill and I hit it off despite the differences. I said, you gotta have him on. He said, I'll think about it, I'll think about it. And then uh, about two months later, I got a, a call from Bill's producer and he said, hey, can you connect us with Gutfeld? Well, Gutfeld was on Bill Maher's podcast on Sunday, and here they are. Remember, one is on Fox News, right? Conservative, scary Fox News, and one is liberal Bill Maher. Here they are getting stoned and drunk talking about the brutal effects of cancel culture. And you couldn't make it because, like he says, the R word a million times. Yeah, you know, yeah. like that kind of stuff. We're like in kindergarten now, where we have to say pee pee and poo poo and yeah. R word. And well, Animal House. I think Animal House still holds up, but you can you could not do that movie, especially in oh. the in the nightclub scene. Oh. When you do you mind if you we dance with your dates? That whole thing would never happen. It would never happen. That's the first time I ever saw. Breasts. But it's every movie. <laughs> it's every movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's every. I, I mean. Any movie made even 10 years ago, and there's something there that you, you, if you really examine who you are, you probably are not offended at all. We all laughed at this stuff and it wasn't terribly, we know what something's terribly offensive. But when you hear it now in 2023, you, 
hunch up because you know, not because of it itself, but because you know the reaction it will cause. Yes. As trust me, that's the silver lining because that's how we beat this thing. We maybe don't beat it fully by politics. There are moments we can and, and DeSantis is doing that whole blueprint thing and all that, that's just fine. But we beat it with these strange alliances. Right? We beat it by, by me and Mar being able to do our thing, by Gutfeld and Mar being able to do their thing, whatever you're doing in your life to bridge those gaps. And if all of the same people keep doing that, the machine will get crazier and crazier. It'll always ramp up the crazy, right? Joy Reid has no way to get out of the, of the bottomless pit she has put herself into. Uh, uh, Chuck Scarborough can't get out. The machine will keep going. They're all in on it too deep. They, they, are, they have pushed it too far so they cannot come back, which is the damn shame because for the years that all of us were warning them, guys, could you just not lie about everything? Could you just not be so completely evil? You can be mostly evil, but not completely, but they couldn't listen. So what they are going to do is, and this is my hope, and I believe it can happen in 2024 at a political level, but it will first take the, it'll take the personal and cultural level first. We can have the most incredible alliance forming right now of those ex-libs and the libertarians and the conservatives and the religious people. And we can put together something under the banner of freedom. If you believe in freedom and you believe this country is good, we got a, we got a shot, we got a chance and we got to team up and do it. And I think that's happening right now. Uh, to that point, why this all comes around at a, at a cultural level, which is why I thought that was interesting. I mean, again, you got the number one host in late night and the, who's on the conservative Fox News and, and the biggest lib, even though the left hates him now, the biggest lib on television in Bill Maher. Uh, but there's this other guy, this guy, Aiden Ross. Uh, and if you don't know him, he is the number one streamer on Twitch, which, which is a video game platform, which has crazy following. And he's the number one guy in there. I mean, this guy gets bananas. Can we even estimate how many views he gets a day? Probably like 50 million views a day. Like something just completely completely insane. He's a huge influencer. Uh, and he just tweeted something very controversial, had the internet lit on fire, my God, in all caps, he said, there are only two genders. Now, I'm not a, I'm not a Twitch guy, okay? I'm not, I'm not a video game guy to any extent anymore. I'm trying to get back in on it. Connor's trying to give me a little video game 101 situation over here. I can still do Mario Brothers 8-bit Nintendo. Uh, you know, if you warp to four and warp to eight and you don't lose, you don't die once, uh, you can beat that game in about 12 minutes. My buddy, Mike Sherman did it in college. Um, he, this kid gets about 60, this is per month. Oh, from the tweet alone, from that tweet alone, just to show you the influence that this kid has, 61 million views, about 525,000 likes, about 70,000 retweets, 31,000 comments. All he did was say something that we all knew was true. We all knew it a couple of years ago. We all knew it was true. But now it's controversial. And now, of course, there's people trying to cancel him and get his deals cut and everything else. But the point is, whether it is some random video game kid or it's the number one host in late night or it's me or it's you, we can start putting the pieces together here. We've got the blueprint people. And on that note, we're going to cold close you today with a, a preview of my interview with Governor DeSantis because, yes, I did ask him the question, okay? I did ask him the question. The full thing will be up at 1.15 Eastern on YouTube, Rumble, and on Locals all at the same time. Uh, so check out uh, this cold close. This is, this is the debut of this thing across, across the board. Uh, and then we got a post-game show for you in about 46 seconds. Well, the clip's probably about a 50 seconds. So give me, let's give me uh, 64 seconds. How about that? Uh, and we'll see you in just a little bit. Okay. I got one more for you. I know you're on a massive blitz and you got to get to number one New York Times, although the ultimate credit would be if they don't put you on at all, because then you can really stick it to them, of course. But is there any other sort of announcement you might want to make or anything else you might want to talk about? As long as we're just chatting here, you know, anything else you want to say about anything or we could just end this now? You tell me. Wouldn't you like to know? I mean, that'd be a, that'd be a good one for you. But uh